Well, the site is the Palais Saint Jordi in Barcelona. The event is the Eurobasket 97 semifinals, the second game, Russia against Italy. Which team is going to earn the right to play Yugoslavia in the final and decide who indeed is the Euro champion? This could go either way, couldn't it, this one? Because Italy showed in the, in the quarterfinal against Turkey just how they can destroy a team. Turkey scored only 43 points against a very defensively orientated and ball control minded Italian team. Russia, though, many people say that they are the team that could beat Yugoslavia in a final. People believe that they are the team that could produce the big game. So well, talk really, about Russia. Who do, you, who do you like in their lineup? There's an awful lot of good players there. They'll start off with Karasev, Mikhailov, Babkov, Fedosov, and Panov. And Fedosov is the man who had the big game in their quarterfinal win against Spain. A very close game indeed. They may be tired still from that. Fedosov was huge in the second half for them. Now you say that was the best game that you've seen Fedosov play. I've, I've seen, uh, maybe I've missed out on the good stuff, but uh, I, I've always found him very disappointing. There he is now, number 13. But he was amazing in the second half. Every time they went to him, he, he gave them points. And I think people have to realize that Russia, in their quarterfinal, when they beat Spain, they beat the host team. So they weren't only playing against Spain, they were playing against a home crowd that was making a lot of noise. Well, there is a relaxed man. He was, he was by the pool this afternoon, just relaxing with his, his wife and child. Well, Sergei Bela, Belov. Well, the bottom line is Italy unbeaten in this tournament. And they manhandled Turkey in their quarterfinal. But Italy, uh, for me, the jury's still out. They run their passing oriented offense. The man who's making the sacrifice is number 10, Carlton Myers. Under normal circumstances, he'd be getting you around about 25 points a game. The other, the other day, or well, yesterday, in fact, in the semi-final, semi quarter-final against Turkey, he just passed the ball around. He didn't want to look for his shot. I think you'll see him take those shots today because they're going to need some points. Russia will be able to put some points on them. How critical is it going to be that Russia is coming off a last-second win when they had to expend a lot of energy, and it was really about 24 hours ago? I think the answer to that we'll find out in the first five minutes of the game because uh, they could still be on a huge emotional high after that. They've sort of wandered through. That's one of the most famous names in Italian basketball ever, Dino Meneghin. I just wonder if he's the man who's being groomed to take over the national team because uh, Ettore Messina is still seeing Meneghin at the moment. But Ettore Messina, the current coach, is going back to club coaching after the Eurobasket finals. Well, they're the refs. Radic and Kohler. Kohler from Slovakia and Radic the Croatian. Well, those are the starting lineups. Russia with Karasaf at point guard, Sergei Babkov, Mikhail Mihailov, Andrei Fedosov, and Sergei Panov, who really changed the way the game was played in the second half against Spain with his defensive job on Michael Smith. Well, they line up at center court for the jump. See Fuchka there. Dan Gay started last night, didn't play a lot for Italy. But Fuchka will be jumping center up against Fedosov, who had a monster second half for Russia against Spain. And the toss, and Italy is going to win the tap. And it's Ricardo Pittis taking it down low. Russia has shown they can fall behind and come back. Italy unchallenged in their quarterfinal. Which team is the real deal? question here is, is ball control basketball playing into the hands of the Russians? If it's Dan, Italy, choose that. And Dan Gay, not shy. He started off hot last night, but he's off on the first jumper. And it's going to be Karasev, who, it must also be said, had a very brave performance last night for Russia. Babkov. This Russian team is gutsy. They're either really hot or really cold. We haven't seen much in between. Babkov with nice look inside. And Sergei Panov scores the, the first two points in the semifinal. Classic Russian clear out. Everybody got out of the paint. Just one guy goes down there, and he's all alone for the two. Sergei Panov. 
Well, the Italian passing game really bothered the Turks last night. We'll see how it bothers Russia. See what kind of adjustments they make. Myers, Carlton Myers for three. Well, we were saying he's going to look to shoot those shots tonight. He's not going to pass them up. Fedosov down low. Again to Panov, and Panov uses the glass. I think they're hoping that Panov is the guy who escapes from the matchups. They want the one guy who's got a, a good matchup against, the Rush, uh, against an Italian player. Well, Myers is taking the initiative for Italy. Russia with a 4 3 lead here early on, and Myers really uh, not looking to shoot the ball in the quarterfinal, but he's going to be. He's going to be the main man for Italy. There's no doubt about it. And that's worth having as well. The first foul on Mikhail Mikhailov. Starting forward on the major defensive forces for the Russians. Carlton Myers makes both. Well, I, th I think I'm correct in saying this taking a minute and a half to get as many points as he had in the whole game last night. And it's, it's incredible the difference with the intensity between, you know, the former round and the semifinal because you can just see those players out there are not going to leave anything on the court or they're going to leave it all on the court. It's a foul on Fushka. Russia seems to really labor when they have the ball on offense. They really work hard. They score, but they have to work for it. Great and Myers. Steal by Myers. Got a hand on that and also brought the foul off Babkov. So already Carlton Myers, a much more central figure in this key game for Italy, perhaps saving himself, you know, in the previous match, knowing that he was going to be called upon here because he's, uh, he's pretty much been a headlines kind of guy already. Down low to Gay. Gay with the turnaround, way off the mark. Good and now. Pass there by Mikhailov. And Kudlin, who's checked in. Kudlin, very streaky. They slow him down. They foul him before he can get off the layup, so. That was a little bit of a test of Italy's uh, transition defense there. They're nearly caught wanting there. Mikhailov, very fast transition pass, or very, outlet, very fast outlet pass, finding Kudlin on the break. Kudlin's in to replace Babkov, who's already in foul trouble. Two early fouls in the first five minutes. Well, that was a good sign from Kudlin getting out on the fast break. And this time it's Fedosov dishing. And Mikhail Mihailov going up strong. Russia trailing by one. And that's what Mikhailov is good at. He's your blue collar worker inside. Yet another off the ball foul. Well, the Italians, looks like they're calling that on Dan Gay. That's right. Dan Gay is going to take a seat. Might be out there for quite a while. I, I have this feeling that uh, Messina puts him in, or oh, Messina, sorry, is the correct pronunciation. Um, Messina is the man who put, he puts Gay in to soak up early fouls. And Galanda also comes out. Alessandro Frasini into the lineup for Italy. Kudlin and the visa sign gets kicked. I guess that guy hasn't paid his bills. <laughs> Maybe they've been contacting him about his bills. Frasini into the lineup for Italy. Benor, who is very tough to handle through this whole tournament, looks like he's got his hands full. Frasini and Frasini pays early dividends. Nice baseline spin. Karasev with the Russians, down by three. Kudlin inside to Mihailov. Nice bounce pass. Again, it's Panov, the man they're going to early on. Great pass by Mikhailov. Panov timed his run perfectly. Myers. Over to Benora, who takes his three. It's off the mark. Panov with a rebound. And this one could be nip and tuck the whole way. 
could see some very good half-court basketball in this game. Fedosov, and Fedosov lets it go from three and he hits it. Fedosov. Well, that was the one thing that was missing from him last night. He wasn't shooting the three at all well. That's a nice one. So Fedosov gives Russia a two-point lead. Just reminding it that you can't leave him unattended out on the perimeter. Pittis. Back over to Benora. Carlton Myers gets his man off the ground. Dishes down low. Has to be it. And they're going to call the double dribble on Frasini. Frasini says, I don't understand that call, and frankly, I don't either. <laughs> it doesn't really matter because he was in there for way over three seconds. That's a good a guy point. behind him who'd been in for even longer. Looked like he never had control of it, but three seconds would have been possibly the right call. Mihailov over to Fedosov. You can just feel the positive energy if you look out at Kudlin right now. Yeah, Kudlin's really working hard to get himself a shot, because he wasn't doing Oh, last night. What, what a move by Fedosov! Fedosov swooping to the basket. I think even... Watch this. Here he goes. Little double, double pump. Brilliant. I think even the coach Sergei Belov liked that one. Fuchka. Over to Myers. And this time the foul will be on Fedosov. So much off the ball contact being called. Ten minutes to go in the first half. Benora into Fuchka. And Fuchka now has lost control again. Kudlin got a hand on that. I think Alessandro Abio very aware of Kudlin and not wanting him to get off. It's a good guy to have on Kudlin as well because Abio is very quick. Got great foot speed. Well, Kudlin does shoot and he scores. Oh There's boy. a three. Now, have we got the golden arm going tonight? Wasn't working last night. But Kudlin, if he starts shooting and if he's got his rhythm going, oh boy, can he light somebody up. Well, Rob, I'm telling you, you can just look at him, and you can tell he by the time he stepped on the court, he has got positive vibes. Fuchka, the big guy misses outside, and Kudlin gets the rebound. If they do have that option with Fuchka, he can shoot the three. Kudlin again. When he gets hot, he gets hot. Mihailov. What a great pass by Mihailov. Foul's been called, but uh, Mikhailov took that dirty possession from Kudlin and turned it into a perfect pass down to Nozov. Marconato. Marconato had a great game last night, of course, against Turkey. He was the architect of the first half run, which all but sealed the game. Karasev, nice spin move. Dishes. Mihailov misses, but he gets his rebound, and he's going to get to the line, but he's upset that he wasn't able to get a three-point opportunity. Can't believe he missed another compel off. <laughs> but uh, Mikhail Mikhailov cannot believe that he missed both times there. Did great work to get the, uh, the offensive rebound. There we go. He did get the foul, though. Marcato's second foul. He's looking a bit lost in this game. I think he's finding it a lot more difficult against the Russian big men than he did against the, the few big men that Turkey had last night. Mihailov buries it. Seven point Russian lead, 8.45 to go in the first period. Carlton Myers, been a little quiet here the last couple of minutes. Over to Fuchka who cuts in and Fuchka finally ground he made in two steps there was phenomenal with those long legs of his. But again, that was all about attention on Carlton Myers driving. Nosov. He's playing guard for a moment there. Karasev drives up. and there he goes. Karasev onto the board. I wonder what they were going to do there. I thought they were maybe going to run uh, Kudlin around the back, but instead they were running a another one of those classic Russian clear outs. Seven-point Russia lead. 
Oh, what a drive by Coldabella. Claudio Coldabella. Goes the foul off Nozov. And Coldabella's not cold from the line. He's hot. But he does miss the second one. Russia by six. Kudlin, he's got that look in his eye. And that's how concerned they're going to be about Igor Kudlin tonight. Fouling him behind the three-point line, Carlton Myers. I nearly had Carlton Myers' finger in his eye there. Ooh. What is it about a player who can just totally not come out to play one night and the next night is like, I'm going to take on the world? You're looking at it from uh, Sergei Belov's point of view. It must be infuriating because if he'd been shooting the way he can shoot, and boy, this kid does have the, the golden arm. There's no doubt about it. If he'd shoot the, been shooting the way he could shoot, he would have killed Spain straight off. Well, he misses the second one. They're going to say that somebody got into the lane too early. The dispute here is whether the foul was on the shot or not. If it, if it was... Uh, not on the shot, he only gets two free throws. Well, Kudlin takes advantage. And with that, a uh, little bit curious him coming out. I'd be surprised if he stays out too long, Kudlin, since he's giving Rush a lot on both ends of the floor. It may just come down to the element of surprise. Maybe he's going to just drop him back in again. Or maybe they're just going to try and get Babkov going because he had a terrible start to the game. All he, all he had in the first few minutes he was out there was fouls. Well, they've got both Paschutins in, Zakar and Evgeny. And now they're starting to pressure the Italians as they bring the ball up to court, perhaps running some of the time off the clock. And this time the long one. No good by Abio. Babkov brings it up. Mihailov over to Nasov. And they're going to say he walked. Yep. Zakhar Pashutin. He's the younger of the two brothers by five years. Both of them play for Saratov, a team that finished second in the Russian Championship behind CSK Moscow. Well, Evgeny Pashutin playing his man very tightly. Here comes Babkov on Myers. He's got his hands full. Myers from three. No good. And Mihailov with the rebound. It's good work nonetheless by Myers, the way in which he manufactured the shot. He did manufacture it, but you wonder if you want to manufacture a three-point shot. <laughs> Babkov drives to Pashutin. Mihailov. Mihailov. Yeah, he's fine with that shot. It's now a 10 point Russian lead. 3.40 to go in the first half. Karasev guarding Benora. Abio and Marcanato play a little give and go there. Oh, oh it's yeah. going to be Pittis for three. Got some shooting out, out there actually at the moment. The Italians obviously keen to try and close the gap or maybe eradicate the gap before the halftime interval. Oh, and Kudlin, talking of shooting, Kudlin's out there as well. And Kudlin goes inside to Kisserin, who a beautiful pass to Panov. Beautiful pass over the shoulder to find Panov. Panov again, this spare man. These teams really cut to the basket well. Both teams do. And this time it's going to be Abio off. He follows the shot. And he's got the rebound. Great offensive hustle by Abio to get that rebound.
Carlton Myers out of the lineup. And Penoff going for that rebound. Marconato showing his value, boxing him out. That was very good. Penoff has just picked up his third foul. But uh, Pittis and Abio are working so well together for Italy. They really should be kept in there as a combination, I think. Italy have now missed four out of their first ten free throws. And you can see Fuchka complaining about Russia getting in too soon, and Fuchka is now wanting a goaltending. What he wants is, is, is the the officials to say, well, that was actually put in by a Russian player, in which case it would be a, that would be two points on that. And the basket will be counted to the Italian captain. Kudlin launches from three-point range. No way good. Off, way off. Benora now running for Italy. Kudlin's better as a standstill shooter. And inside it goes to Fuchka, and Fuchka wants the basket and the foul, but they're going to say no go. Fuchka buries it. Fuchka wanting to heat up here. Uttering instructions to his team. The instructions are simply to Gregor Fuchka put these things down. Clear looking a bit shaky from the line. Karasev. Oh, great defense from Pittis, but unable to get the turnover. Well, replaced. mark it down, 141. Mihailov comes back into the game with three fouls. See if he can play smart. Karasev, the Russians. Ten seconds on the shot clock. In low to Mihailov. And knocked out of bounds. Benora now for Italy. Marconato. Italy trying to end the first half in a flourish. Trail by five. Talking of trail, that was the man that didn't watch. Marconato coming through on the trail. Carlton Myers in. And Carlton Myers has fouled Igor Kudelin. Carlton Myers not wanting to give away those fouls like that. I know he's got at least two, but that's three. Three. Whoa. I'll get him out of there right now. Ah, uh, clearly. And it has him. actually happened. That was a pretty pointless foul. <laughs> Well, you may get your wish. Alessandro, or rather, Abio, is back in. Along with Pittis. Kudlin buries both. So it's back up to a seven point lead. Benora to Fuchka. Guarded by Fedosov. Everything contested inside for Italy. Seems like Russia shots maybe not as well contested down low. Mm -hmm. Benora, 24 second shot clock, 45 on the clock. And an ugly looking air ball from Pittis. Perhaps it slipped out of his hands. He's looking down at his hands like, how could that be in Kudlin? A look of confidence as he runs off and a timeout. Russia leading by seven. Russian ball. And with only 37 seconds left, we do know one thing Italy is going to be trailing at halftime. Karasev leaves his feet. He's going to take the three. Karasev. Hit two crucial ones for them in the second half against Spain last night. Not the sort of guy you can leave out there on the perimeter. And not the way Italy want this first half to end. Rush on a five point run. Eight seconds on the game clock. Abio, he gets hit, taking a three. And no doubt about it, Babkov, not a brilliant play. He definitely popped him on the head, it looked like to me. Found something amusing about it. I don't know what it was. Hmm. 
Well, we got. It's difficult to tell. Got, I don't see how his, his arm was that close to him. We got cut off from it, but for a couple of reasons, a big play because he's going to take three foul shots, and Babkov has picked up his third. But Russia will have time, it looks like, to get off a shot. And your money would have to be on Karasev or Kudlin for this last shot. The lead is seven. Ooh, the long pass. Oh, what happened? Weird things are happening here. The, the shot, the clock goes off, or the buzzer sounds, rather, and there's still about four seconds left on the clock. I don't know what happened there. And what Maybe a remarkable the shot turnaround. Clock had been left on somehow. This weird sequence of events. <laughs> Italy, with Russia trying to get that last second shot, they throw the interception in Italy now, go back to the line. Pittis. Hey, more crucial, more crucial, Jeff, is the fact that that foul has been assessed to Mikhail Mikhailov and what we told about, said about oh. the, the Russian gambling, putting him back in for those last uh, couple of minutes. It's not paid off. Russian roulette, definitely. Foul. Oh, and Marconato and absolutely things coming apart at the seams for Russia at the end of the first half. Mikhailov with four fouls and Italy clawed within five of this semi-final, I think the Russians have a lot of serious thinking to do at the locker room. Belov there is absolutely infuriated with the table officials for whatever went on, whatever went wrong with the shot clock. Halftime, Russia leads 38-33. Yeah. Well, 20 minutes decides who goes to the final of Eurobasket 97. And Russia, while they may lead 38 to 33, very worrying aspects at the end of that first half. A sequence of events that both you and I are mind boggled over what's happened. I was amazed. We were, we're talking, we actually called this, didn't we? We said, uh, why is he putting Mikhailov in? He might get a fourth foul. And what happens with 5.8 seconds left? Mikhailov gets that uh, fourth foul. I think that this guy, Sergei Belov, made a mistake in putting him back in. I, I don't see why he had to have that guy in. Uh, Mikhailov, as far as I'm concerned, needed to be there for as much of the second half as possible. As you can see, he's not starting in the second half for Russia. And it was a calculated risk, and it went wrong. And the way Italy finished the first half, it could badly backfire. And you can see the way Sergei Panov walked off the court, shaking his head, thinking, oh my, what have we done? We've let Italy back into this game. We'll see, what how, we'll see how it pans out. Italy with the tip, and Fuchka automatically goes inside and gets swatted. But Marconato is the man. He's been the man for Italy the last couple of days. Certainly has. He's only 22 years of age, so there is a great prospect for the future. I say prospect for the future. A guy who dunks like that is already well and truly in the game. Pressure will be on Nosov, who's in for Mihailov. And Nosov out to Babkov. And Fedosov is going to get the foul called on Fuchka. It's Fuchka's third foul. So that'll be, that is a, a sort of counterpoint to the Mikhailov foul situation. That was a careless foul. Just waved a hand at him. Look at that. How, how can you expect to get the ball from that angle? Although I have to say, it looked like he had a lot of leather. <laughs> Messini is like, come on. Nah. Well, Karasev, who hit a big three at the end of the end of the first half, and it's Panoff, really Panoff is off. shot that. Benora, Fuchka, Fuchka, and Italy trail 38-37. It's great transition offense by Italy. Fuchka, for a big man, is very, very quick, on, very, very light on his feet. And clearly, Italy looks like the stronger team out of the break. A crucial period right here at the start of the second half. Karasev missed a beautiful pick and roll. He could have played with Nozov there. Shot clock winding down to five. Fedosov drives. A wayward hook. And it's that man again, Marconato, with the rebound. Two Russians on him. Great hands by Marconato. Myers oh, and Italy drive. lead. Carlton Myers with seven points in Italy. 
are leading the Russians. I believe it's the first time. I think it's the first lead they've had. And certainly, Russia not looking very confident at the moment. We'll see how long Belov will go without Mihailov and without Kudelin. I think it'll be a long time. And the charge on Babkov. Well, everything's going wrong for Russia at the moment. That's a fourth foul on Babkov as well, I think. Well, he's going to bring in Kudelin. Babkov with his fourth end. Fourth foul. And that's points production that's sitting on the bench as well. So between these two, if you go on game averages, you're looking at something like about 25 to 28 points sitting on the bench for most of the second half. That being said, Kudelin has always been a player who rises to the occasion, or he does not at all. He crashes. That's right. We're talking about potential here. Potentially, he could win this game for Russia. He could also very nearly lose it for them. I've got a feeling that Kudlin's got a few tricks up his sleeve. We'll, we'll see how it pans out. Carlton Myers, though. Oh, and he's starting to ignite. Carlton Myers draws the foul. Italy are using the direct approach at the start of the second half instead of these long, drawn-out offenses that they've been very fond of throughout the tournament. They're going, <coughs> excuse me, they're going straight at the heart of the Russian defense. And he's got some hop. Look at him hopping in there, and Nosov. Nosov is seven foot two, and Carl Myers is around about a foot shorter. Italy didn't shoot particularly well from the free throw line in the first half. They only made 11 of 18, but Myers has made both of them here to start off the second half, and they've got a three point lead. And the crowd starting to make a lot of noise in the Italian section. That was called on Ricardo Pitis. He used to be known as the Italian Kukoc. Well, that's quite a compliment because we all know Kukoc is a sensational player. Karasev to Kudelin. Over to Fedosov. Oh, long one oh. from Fedosov. Toyed with his man completely. Gregor Fushka is holding up his hand saying, I'm sorry about that. I stepped off him and it was fatal. Fedosov's second three pointer. Tie game. 17 minutes left. Myers and his pass off the mark. Benora, what a drive. The pass to Marconato, though, excellent Russian interior defense, but the persistent Italians cash in. And it was Benora who picked up the basket. With no Mikhailov there, the Italians are a lot more confident about crashing the offensive boards. Italy lead by four. Kudelin, there oh, yeah. is Kudelin. Way outside the arc. He see just the, see the rhythm in that. He Beautiful just abs shot. absolutely reeks of confidence, doesn't he? It's unbelievable. We'll see what happens. He's guarding Benora. I think Belov has put all of his eggs in one basket with that decision to play Mihailov at the end of the first half. And that basket is Kudelin. The drive by Italy and Marconato with a follow. Rebound by Marconato. This guy's won the fines in the tournament without any doubt. The big body Mihailov, not inside. Italy crashing the boards. And you can tell, can't you? Yet again, Italy going straight to the boards. This one's starting to heat up. Karasev to Fedosov. Can't keep him down for long. Fedosov drives. Ball rebounded out there off the hand of Marconato. Well, Galanda checks back in. Played a little bit in the first half. Played a couple of minutes. Giving nose off a bit of a breather. Kisserin's interim place. And you know, Kisserin was the man who was subbed out by Mikhailov. Karasev and the substitution does not pay dividends for Italy as <laughs> Galanda picks up the foul and puts Karasov on the line for three. I'm amazed at how many times we've seen that in this competition. Shooters being fouled behind the arc. Another thing we've seen an awful lot of in this competition is uh, players coming off the bench and committing silly fouls because they just seem to get cold when they're sitting on the bench. It's a concentration thing. It's an ability which uh, 
not many players have thinking themselves into the game. Russia made 7-11 from the free throw line in the first half, and Karasev. Pretty reliable free throw shooter. He's going to miss this one because I've said that. Well, no, he makes it, and we've got a tie game. Kudelin working. Kudelin. Oh. He's not. He's not normally a guy who can work for his shot and hit it like that. But that was excellent work. Does the word explosive mean anything to oh, you? Oh boy. He's a Kudlin. street shooter, and confidence is, is part of the street shooter's game. Now, if that doesn't give him confidence, nothing will. Well, Russia lead by four, and confident Kudelin is the reason. And he got and a hand on that as well. Kisserin, Kudelin nice. up to Karasev. And they pull it out. And you almost have to think, you gotta put the rock into the big into the Kudlin's hands. Karasev over to Kisserin. Down low to Mihailov. And he's gonna get the foul. Hey, it's it's crunch time for Italy. Down by eight. Yeah, Italy needs to be back in this game. They can't just let it slip away from them like this. Coming up on the seven-minute mark. Myers. Truly a non-factor in this contest. Oh, good dish inside, but Russia comes away with it as Pittis can't convert. And you've got to like the Russians' chances now of by eight, under seven minutes. They've been so much more secure under their own boards since Mikhailov came back in. Have you noticed that? They have been, and it's going to be a miracle if he lasts the whole game, but... <laughs> Well, Fuchka grabs that rebound, Benora. Well, nice drive. And Benora, calm, cool, collected. Nice and mobile. Nobody seemed to pick him up. Italy are a team that likes to work that ball around, but they might want to start thinking about getting that shot up a little quicker. Looks like Messina has said to them, uh, let's go back to what was successful for us at the start of the second half. Let's be more direct. Well, Kudelin, long range. And that's the Kudlin we all know and love. Maybe a little too quick on that one. And Italy drives, but the shot is blocked out of bounds from Bonora. Kudlin, Kudlin, I think that was the first time he's taken an early shot. You see Bonora driving there. Yeah. That was the first time I think he's really rushed one. Here's Bonora. Myers looks for a shot, and he oh, hits. Oh, yes. Classic Carlton Myers, the short drive, up he goes, good elevation. Two points. He goes into double figures, 11 points for him now. He could yet be a factor in this game, Jeff. Indeed, Mihailov, we'll see how long he can last. Four fouls. Pick and roll. Mihailov again on the baseline, and his shot is no good. Doesn't even bother to contest the rebound. Can't take any risks. Fedosov, of course, still on the bench. But we've got Kisserin in, who's played some big minutes. He's had to play big minutes because of Mikhailov's foul trouble. Pittis. Russia leads by four. Shot clock, 10 seconds. Bonora. Out to Fuchka for three. Not even close. It'd only been two, I think. It looked to me like one of those big feet he's got. It was way across the line. And Fuchka, I just don't understand why a man commits a foul like that. I think he just got uh, into a position where he got overplayed. There should have been a switch there on the pick. And, uh, ooh, that's four fouls on Fuchka. Oh, dear. Even those long legs can get him into position. Here, Karasev driving, and Kisserin has checked out. Fedosov has checked in. And Karasev. Boy, he's a good free throw shooter, this guy. Indeed, he's 4 of 4 for tonight. Make that 5 of 5, and Russia now lead by 6, under 5 minutes. We question some of the decisions of the Russians, but you cannot question their heart because they've, oh, no, been, no. they've had their backs against the wall a lot, and they just keep coming. Myers! Myers. Getting hot. 
Boy, this guy is heating up. Myers Five shot. points in the last two minutes. I think Myers knows that his team needs him. 60 to 57, Russia. Fedosov for three. No good. Great the rebound there was by, uh, by Karasev. It's all hands to the pumps in there for uh, Russia. Karasev is uh, having a major impact. Not the smallest of guards, though. Kudlin. Oh, uh, Kudlin. Ooh, Kudlin. It's been so up and down. It's a real roller coaster ride with Igor Kudlin. And I think for the first time, I'm starting to sense that he might be losing a little bit of confidence out there. But with four minutes left, Russia are nursing a three point lead. And the prospect of Carlton Myers heating up has to be kind of scary. 10 turnovers for Russia, that's a lot. And we sent to the Lubyanka, who are in the old Soviet Union for that. Well, Carlton Myers. Karasev has been called. That might be his fourth as well. It is. I think that's his fifth. Nope. That's his fourth. Well, this game turning into a war of attrition because if you look up at the scoreboard, all you can see are green spots beside the numbers, and that means fouls on both teams. Carl Myers, 16 points. That means he's had nine in the second half. Although he's been out for quite a while because of his foul trouble, he's come in and given them some big points. Seven since he came back in. Kudlin. Kudlin again, turns it over, and Pashutin has fouled Carlton Myers, and suddenly Russia are unraveling. That actually was a very intelligent foul because uh, Russia were in no position to defend the break there. And this is pressure right here. Carlton Myers perhaps feeling it with 3.33 in the game. Tie game though, 60 all. Who's gonna step up for Russia to take that big shot? Every shot is a big shot from now on. Ten on the shot clock. Babkov with four fouls. Mihailov with four fouls. Babkov, time running down. It's Fedosov. And Fedosov's three is no good. And the Russians are not going to get too many second attempts because all their big guys are on foul trouble. They can't afford to contest rebounds at the other end. Wide knuckle time. Boy. Pettis drives, dishes. Marconato! Italy lead. Marconato's come up big for them again. And for the first time, you really start to think that Russia are on the ropes. Babkov, and that help defense from Italy, denies the entry pass. Well, shot clock winding down, and they turn it over. Karasev, they say, stepped on the line. And he does have a shiner on that right eye. Yeah, so he must have gotten an contact. elbow. This is becoming a prize fight. 62-60, Italy with the lead and the ball. Two minutes. Myers, but suddenly Myers resorts back to his old ways. Six seconds on the shot clock, Pittis. Time winding down. Panora's going to have to heave it. Oh, and they don't box out on Fuchka. Fuchka and Mikhailov was very lucky not to get the foul called on him there. So he made contact with Fuchka. Time winding down on the Iron Curtain. Russia. Inside to Mikhailov, and he, he gets pushed. pushed. Yes. They're not going to let him have it, are they? Well, the foul zone, Pittis. That was a great pass inside by Babkov. How he threw that through, goodness only knows. Pittis gave Mikhailov one heck of a shove, and you'd have to as well, because uh, Mikhailov is one big guy. Solid. 127 left, 64-60 Italy. Mikhailov has been playing 
with four fouls here in the second half for about 10 minutes. And he misses the second one, so Italy okay, are no starting. offensive rebound possible. The Russians just played straight out. Smart Italy. basketball, but it's, it's non-competitive. It's going to come a time when they're going to need an offensive rebound. Italy closing in on the final place here. The shot clock down to eight. Myers drives, passes over to Morcanato. Off, but the offensive rebound, the little man, Bonora. Russia decides to go into a trap, and now the time is also the enemy against Russia. 45 seconds on the game clock. Italy running out the shot clock, and Italy, this would be a sensational victory. Pittis, seven seconds on the shot clock. Almost goaltending there. Mihailov and Pittis. It's called for the foul on Panov. It looked to me like Pittis' shot still had a chance to go in and uh, didn't I wonder if we're going to see this again. Uh, I have a feeling you took it below the level of the rim, and it's only if it's above the level of the rim on its downward, uh, downward flight. Well, we're not going to get another look at it, but Pittis fouls out. So with a timeout, 30 seconds left in the contest, a final berth at stake, Italy lead 64-61. Here's the thing, though. Five Italy, when plays. they get the ball back, they're not going to have to shoot. So Russia, if they make these, they're going to have to foul. Panov. Boy, talk about pressure. Yeah, this is big pressure for Panov. For a guy who's had a very slow second half. Well, he's been kind of a forgotten man. He didn't get off the bench there for a while. He misses the second one, but the offensive rebound. What a turn. Mihailov with four fouls goes in and Karasev, he gets blocked the three-pointer. Oh Unbelievable. My word. What has Gregor Fushka done? Well, we're gonna have to see this again. How many times have we seen it? Karasev takes the three-pointer and gets fouled by Fuska. That's Fushka out of the game as well. But uh there's a discussion going on actually at the moment, I think, as to how many free throws it is. Oh, he's clearly behind the three-point line. No time out has been called. He was behind the line. There was contact. Well, I'm beginning to think of what you were asking me earlier about uh, Gregor Fuschka and uh, the fact that he can be a little bit uh, irascible at times. Maybe you were right. Well, he's he's actually kept his, his emotions in check here, but he's just a little bit unpredictable, and Russia can now regain the lead as Karasev makes the first. Still looks like that Italy will have the last say though. 23 seconds left on the clock. It's well, the, given us only two free throws. I'm not so sure the, the officials, or rather the referees saw that because if we looked at that, his foot was clearly behind the line. I do not understand. Maybe they've called it as after the, after the shot. They must have called it after the shot, but I'm not, I don't understand that call. Anyway, Italy is going to go to the line. The foul. Talk about pressure now. It's going to shift on to Abio, who you Sandra said was going to be a, a key factor. Italy with a one-point lead. 21 seconds remain. Oh, wow. Oh. Abio. And Abio has only just come back into the game. Can they box out? He's got one of two. Well, Russia... Say they've got nine lives. I'd say that's true. Well, Karasev. I, I say we're heading for overtime. Karasev. Oh, oh, a little too selfish. And Myers is going to be fouled. Foul was by Babkov. I think that's him out of the game. No, it's five. And okay, Rob Kudlin. Yes, Kudlin got the first contact. If Myers makes either one of these free throws, it's almost prayer time for Russia. Well, certainly they're going to have to get down and, and make, make a shot and get a quick foul. Italy, I don't know if they want to foul and put Russia on the line. So we'll see what happens here with 12 seconds remaining. He makes both, and Italy lead by four. 12 cool. seconds. foul shots. Nine seconds. Babcock, off the mark. Mihailov. Get back behind the line. 
Babkov again, and the offensive rebound to follow, and Russia are eliminated. Italy have pulled this one out. Ettore Massini, celebration time, baby, in Italy. Oh, what a great finish to this game as well. Felt Myers, those two Rockshaw free throws, winning the game for them. In the end, Russia just couldn't come up with anything. Two missed threes from Babkov, and Italy are going to the final for the first time since they won in Nantes, something like 16 years ago. You have to, you have to appreciate the job that Italy has done. I don't think there's any doubt about how Italy was able to come back. Carlton Myers came off the bench and hit some big shots. He was in the tank, and he, he came was. out and played big. It was, it was huge. And by the same token, hey, Italy got really lucky because with that, with that critical foul there at the end, if Karasov had made it. That's right. Karasov may be self-destructive for Russia, but you look at Carlton Myers, 14 points in the second half. A, some big, a big game from him. Gregor Fuschka had 13 points as well, but another player who needs to be mentioned yet again is Denis Marconato. He had 14 points and 10 rebounds. A huge game from him, the young 22-year-old. And Italy, I think, just about shading it deservedly in this final. And again, it's going to be Italy in the final facing Yugoslavia after a 67-65 thriller in Barcelona.